Welcome back to Bayscape. I'm going to start this episode off like no other one I've done up to this point. I'm going to give a rundown of all the changes and updates in a shotgun style. and uh, Just because it's been forever. So hold on to your ass. Let's cover all the vanilla changes and updates over the last six months. Uh, in chronological order, we had Halloween and its drops and events. We celebrated 99 Agility for Mr. Green and Lone Lamer. On Wednesday, December 6, 2023, Vanilla got a big update. Uh, changes to certing so that you can now cert or uncert all. Success rates for thieving and woodcutting and fishing were reverted back and are more like what we had in the first four years of Vanilla. Uh, we added more NPCs in certain training areas. In short, a few were added aiming to get XP rates uh, the same as OG Classic. Uh, the Android app got an update, so we now have Pinch to Zoom. You have an automatic keypad for removal of bank items. It just looks nicer overall. It's a little less grainy. Uh, we no longer have an IP address on your welcome screen for streamers. Uh, that was a bit of a nuisance, so now that's gone. Uh, we have a sidebar menu for hit points, fatigue, and prayer on the left. With the uh, F2 key on your keyboard, you can toggle that on and off. Uh, another welcome addition. We had the Christmas and New Year's events and rare drops for the first time in four years, uh, which was nice. We had a lot of people come out for that and Halloween. Really, both events uh, went off really good. Uh, I did a podcast with Beast Fable about his new server, Neat F2P, which we'll get into. We made a completely new deathmatch PVM event, uh, Mr. Green did, uh, in the Ogre Enclave. We had a 99 here, a 99 there. God, what else can I add to this list? We had an update for God Mage. Then we had a reversal of that update. So a little bit of a flip-flop because the player base wasn't 100% in agreement with it, so it reverted. We had another set of updates January 24th, I believe it was. We, we got all kinds of uh, tickable options for the client. Uh, new world map feature. We got in-game skill calculators for again, max hit and then high scores. Uh, we had updates to the NPC database allowing item search now in the bestiary. We have automatic screenshots for when you level up now. Uh, you also have manual screenshots built in with the F12 key. An account log feature now that stores up to 10 accounts uh, for quick logins which is really nice if you're forgetting your passwords or the name of your accounts you can have them all saved. Uh, now we have, an, we have an option to show inventory count on the top right corner now. Uh, an option to show the world map button, which is really nice. An option to kill the dungeon light flicker, which has been my uh, nemesis. We now have the option to turn that off. The seizure flicker. Uh, we have a deposit all bank button now, which is uh, ugh, crazy. Uh, we have better and more accurate agility success rates. We had, you know, old mods leaving and new mods coming coming on and uh, a changing of the guard, so to say. With Lone, me and Lone Lamer are now moderators. We had more transfers from RSC Preservation. We had popular YouTubers making videos about preservation. It's been a minute since I've checked their numbers, but uh, I think they're pretty pretty high still. And with that, we had a lot more tr uh, transfers from Preservation to Vanilla. Like I said earlier, Neat F2P launched on February 24th. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, that's Beast Fable Server. Highly recommend you check that out. Um, Vanilla had a launcher update, which looks pretty cool compared to the old. And that's we're getting up to the recent news. 
Uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I think Fate is lovingly going over the game and the website. Uh, and the admins are, are tight and more focused than ever. I, th I think Vanilla is in a healthy state as far as behind-the-scenes stuff goes. Uh, and I'm proud that we've done that and and what we've done so far in 2024. So that's... There goes the end of my notes. So the rest of this is just going to be improvised. It's just me and you now. Mono e mono. Um, anyway, you know, it's been a, ch a big chunk of time since I've done an update video. But that's, you know, the long and short of it uh, to cover the last six months or so since I've done one of these. I think I think recently I, I feel like I'd rather play than make videos. I, I'm definitely not a YouTuber. At least, at least I don't see it that way. Um, and, and over the last year, I've, I've had quite a few uh, health scares, um, which put me out, you know, for a while. I went uh, 35 plus years of my life never having a panic attack, and all of a sudden, uh, around this time last year, I was I was having them daily. Uh, so, so it's taken about a year for me to figure out what was causing it and what works and. I lost a lot of weight during that time. It really wasn't good. I've been told I sound like a fat guy, but uh, <laughs> that couldn't be further from the truth. I'm, uh, what am I, six feet tall or something, and I'm 160? I, and I was down to under 140 pounds for a while. So yeah, not fat. Not, not a fatty. Uh, so m most every aspect of your life suffers w when you're going through something like that. And it, it just takes time. Um, and, and during all of that, I wasn't even remotely thinking about making videos. Even though I love you all and I, you know, I'd, I like to be entertaining and informative and an outlet for RSC to some extent. Uh, it, it just wasn't something that I was able to do as much as I would have liked to. Uh, so, so I focused on playing and, and moderating and trying to do what I can behind the scenes for Vanilla. Uh, you, you really can't thrive without a good Discord uh, and support. So I've tried to get in there as much as I can and, uh, you know, be helpful. Uh, grab an oar, so to say. Uh, so, so really, let's let's get down to it. What's the 411 on Vanilla? What's the scoop for RSC as a whole? I think in 2024, if, if you're a new viewer uh, and you've been thinking about getting your feet wet and you just, you're undecided, maybe I, maybe I can inform you in some way here. I can, I can say for sure lately that the player numbers are weird this year by comparison for Vanilla. They really don't reflect 2022 into 2023 at all. We had more active players in the late summer, early fall of 2023 than we did in 2022 it was completely dead then uh, so it's it's slowly been growing um, the winter did bring in some new players the events definitely cranked the numbers up but it seems like if rares aren't the incentive to play I think the population just kind of nose dives I mean it's kind of sad but it is what it is Dynasty is really going good at the moment, so so people are still playing RSC. Uh, Preservation still gets good numbers. Neat F2P is doing really well right now, too. RSC emulation is still going strong. I guess that's just how RSC in the modern day exists. and You just have to accept that, and it's many factions spread out across few uh, key private servers because... Jagex had to do what it did and shut it down, and that's that. Um, you know, plus, if people want to play with their friends, they're going to go play on A, B, C, or D, whether or not it's a, the server's doing good or better than the other one. It's it's not has nothing to do with their decision. You have you know many options, and you just kind of have to find your your niche and. Uh, trial by it's by you know trial by error you know uh, but need f2p I wanted to touch on that um, I've been over there a little and I'm really enjoying the fresh start of a new server it only comes around once and you have to seize the moment when you when it happens 
Uh, there's a lot of people from, from the early days of vanilla over there, and they're mixed in with a lot of preservation people and also some current vanilla people. Um, some people who won't play on either vanilla or preservation, so they've found themselves there with, like, no other option. Um, but yeah, it's a definite mix, a, a literal who's who of Basecape nerds. Uh, I've enjoyed the Beast Fable streams for these early, early days, and, and I, I can tell he's into it. I tried to send him funny shit when he's streaming, you know, get a, get a laugh. This one retard commented on my video, I'll bring it up. Uh, random dude 69 or something says to me something like uh, sees 3500 views on a ultimate Iron Man series then puts out constant crap and then uh, in that day I was not in the fucking mood to hear it you know uh, hey you want to make an Iron Man series weekly you know how much work that takes try it out you little bitch we'll see how far you get fucking YouTube commenters it's, it's like the algorithm giveth, and the algorithm taketh away. You got recommended a video of mine, and probably didn't watch a single other video. Have no context for this channel, and just shit all over it. So I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, that's part of being a YouTuber. And yes, I plan to make another video about the Ultimate Iron Man. But I gotta tell you, all I've been doing on that Iron Man account is mining and smithing gold bars over and over and over. And I did uh, like some fletching for the Temple of I Ikov quest that I plan to do coming up. And what I had up to that point is just not very exciting. To you know, I, I don't know how these Iron Man YouTubers have lives. They they gotta if they do, they've got to be absolutely horrible. I mean, I would say in hindsight's 2020, and had I known so many people would have seen that video, I probably would have either, you know, broke it up more or just backlogged an episode or two. Uh, but yeah, the, the majority of people who watch my videos didn't sub for that. Uh, so it is what it is. I mean, to me, part one, really, it's pretty good, and it, it stands on its own as a good introduction to a classic ultimate iron man you know but uh back to need f2p um i think a good way that this server can keep going is to have a supportive discord and like like i was saying earlier that's what i've been trying to focus on is you focus on the players who are already playing and not trying to drag more in you want to have a good thing going first and that's 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 key and then you have to have a good staff behind you and a few guides and, and people that are willing to help, players that are willing to help. Uh, and it also shows the server is active. You know, that's what drew me into Vanilla. It, it seemed like a small, closely knit community. Uh, and I think that Vanilla does a good job of this. I think that Preservation does a good job of this too, even though I think their Discord is just too, it's so massive. It has so many sections. It's kind of overwhelming. Uh, being a vanilla mod, I have seen so many accounts created go to cows in Lumbridge at level 3 and do stupid shit like it's old school and just sort of shake my head. It, it, it's To be a fly on the wall, you, you have no idea how stupid it is, how stupid people are. Uh, and then they just, you know, they inevitably quit within the first hour or two and they're never to be seen again because they just don't get it or there's no other players in the area to help them out. They probably watched, you know, a video and got inspired and made an account and, you know, but the, the excitement quickly fizzles out and they feel, you know, up to their neck in doubt. Uh, so it's a real challenge to attract the younger generation because it takes so much time to grind levels. And I've said this before, they have to be an outlier of the younger generation. Probably probably with OCD tendencies, um, rather than a short attention span gamer. Uh, this game attracts a lot of people who are on the spectrum. And I've talked to Zephyr about this. I, I think that it's, it's that over and over again repetitiveness that is sort of calming and therapeutic in a way. As opposed to playing like Call of Duty, uh, where it's action-packed at every turn. You're In this game, you're slowly building things day by day. So, I mean, those are the games I've always liked. 
Uh, and if you, you know, if you want action, you will have the wilderness. You can always go to the wild. And if you want the wilderness on crack, you can always go to Dynasty or Emulation. Uh, so there's definitely two two types of RSC players, skillers and PKers, and a good server can draw both. Um, so let's hope Need F2P can thrive with both uh, after that honeymoon phase has ended. Uh, I really would like to see another successful 1x option for people that want to play. Other than that, you know, vanilla versus preservation shit, which I'm kind of sick of. I think all of us who have lived through that have had enough. I kind of, I refuse. Well, I don't, I don't refuse to talk about it, but I, I really don't want to get into the drama between vanilla and preservation anymore. And that's why I usually tell people to try both, you know, and see if they like it and make up your mind. It's two very different servers with two very different dev and admin teams and communities. Uh, so that's that's usually what I say. Uh, you got to try them out. Uh, and then I think lastly, I just want to touch on uh, Easter is, is right around the corner. So we will be having events. Uh, I don't know the dates yet. Uh, there will be an Easter event. There will be another survival event this time. Uh, it'll be Shadow Spiders that's coming up. I uh, don't know the date for that. And there will be another 32 tournament very soon. Uh, so we should have a nice little action-packed March in early April. Uh, we we had, we tried the 13 tournament, but uh, we really didn't get a good showing. So I, I would have to be, I don't know, absolutely begged to do another one of those. If we do, uh, it's just nobody showed up. So when it doesn't work, you don't you don't do it again. That's the definition of crazy. Uh, but congratulations to Duke Master for winning that pot. It was an insanely good pot for a low-level tournament. We had like six people competing for over three million in worth. Uh, so yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad Duke won that. He he's he's an old old timey old timer. Uh, so yeah, we had six people competing over that pot, and it was it was a huge chunk of. I think I gave away four. Uh, rune two handers, two rune battle axes, three pumpkins, one egg, um, 2.2 or 2.3 million in, in GP, uh, uh, a thousand, I think I had 1500 nature runes and a thousand chaos runes for a character that takes like one hour to build. Um, man, I, yeah. I was hoping we would have had enough for 2v2, but uh, we had 1v1, and that's the way it goes. Yeah, you know. But, uh, yeah. 15 to 20 people it would have been would have been if we would have given away a rare or like a party hat, but I, I can't do that. I think a lot of people would like to see party hats as prizes, but the admin mod chat for Vanilla has discussed this at length. I mean... People were sort of like stark graving mad after, you know, the rares drop. We saw a lot of sketchy shit, trades between players, people, shit that we thought was real world trading. Uh, but people are sly and they, and they take the Discord private messages as opposed to RSC and there's no way to track it and suddenly one guy has a lot of worth. You know, things look sketchy. And then you have people like PMing everyone in the Discord and like soliciting for rares, and then you just, it, it, I don't know. Uh, so, so the point of, that I'm trying to make is like, I, can't, I can't put more rares into the economy because we know the number now. And also I'd like to have people show up to compete instead of for the prize, you know, and get, get the... Uh, you are the winner, therefore, you know, you have the title. And it's not and it's not all about what you won. It's about showing up to PK. Uh, but yeah, we we've tried with rares and I mean we flooded we flooded the market and the price went up. So that's 
I don't know, maybe I could do an entire episode on the economy of rares, but uh, that's where it is. I mean, in vanilla where most things are, are iron manned and grinded to death for or bartered, that's that lowest number uh, party hat will never go for, you know, 5 million GP. It should never go for more than 5 million GP, like a yellow, you know. I mean, we could run a re redrop next year making the shit worthless, so why spend so much time scheming rares and jacking up the prices? I don't know. They just, I, think, I think party hats, in, in particular, just kind of poison the well of an otherwise well-to-do community, and it opens the door to the grimy asses in the, in the real-world trading. At least, at least the active players got a chance to snag some, and that's great. Uh, but yeah, that's about all I had for today, and, and I just wanted to wrap it up, and I wanted to say thank you all for listening and watching and staying subscribed. I hope to do more of these coming up. Uh, I hope to do uh, put out a Ultimate Iron Man Part 2 soon, and uh, a couple other things. We may do a exclusive Neat F2P video, uh, and certainly not a fucking Iron Man series. <laughs> that I can't keep up with. Maybe some fun stuff is what I'd like to do instead of just posting events, uh, recordings of the events. Uh, but that's about it. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. Peace.